Lesson 4.2 is gradient or slope of a line and its applications. I would pause the video and write down these notes. So gradient is IB's word for slope. We use the letter M to represent slope or gradient and it measures the steepness of a line. The slope formula is the change in Y or how much you rise over the change in X or how much you run. So it's if you have two coordinates X1, Y1 and x2, y2, then the slope between them would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. A positive gradient means that your line is increasing, it's moving up towards the right. A negative gradient means it's decreasing, we're moving down towards the left, so positive slope and negative slope. If you have a zero gradient, that is a horizontal line, and if you have an undefined gradient, that would be a vertical line. So a horizontal line, because it doesn't increase or decrease at all, your change in y would be 0. 0 divided by anything is 0, so that's why it has a 0 slope or 0 gradient. An undefined gradient, a vertical line, it doesn't have any change in the x direction, so anything divided by 0, we can't divide by 0, so that's why it's undefined or no slope. So here's a couple examples. So determine the gradient of the line joining points A which is 4 comma 1 and B which is 8 comma 3 and then also down here go ahead and find the gradient of these two lines given the graphs. So the first one if I'm finding the slope change in Y over change in X so I did the uh, difference between the Y's 3 minus 0 over the difference between the X's 8 minus 4 make sure you subtract in the same direction it doesn't matter which one goes first as long as the same point is going first in both the X's and Y's so you end up with 2 over 4 or simplified 1 over 2. So every time you go up 1 in the y direction, you go up 2 in the x direction. So down here, number 2, I found a couple points. So this first one, I found the point 2, 5 and 6, 3. And I found the slope between them. You could have also done slope triangles. So you could have created a slope triangle here and said that you are going down 2 and to the right 4. Or you could use slope formula and do 3 minus 5 over 6 minus 2. You end up with negative 2 over 4 or negative 1 half. Every time you go down 1, you're going to the right 2. And then same thing over here. You can either use slope triangles, so you're going up 2 and to the right 5. Or you could have used um, the slope formula, and I used the point 0, negative 1, and 5, 1. So 1 minus a negative 1 over 5 minus 0 is 2 over 5. So we have this point D here, which is at 1, 2, and we want to find the slope of the horizontal line that passes through the point 1, 2, and the vertical line that passes through the point 1, 2. So go ahead and pause the video and do number 3. So this one's just testing what we talked about before, the slope of a horizontal line and the slope of a vertical line. Just to show it, I did pick a second point for each of these lines. So for the horizontal line, I picked the y-intercept at 0, 2, and did slope formula, and we get 0 divided by 1. 0 divided by anything except for 0 is 0. So the slope of a horizontal line is always 0. For the vertical line, I picked the x-intercept here at 1, 0, so you end up with 2 divided by 0. We cannot divide, divide by 0, so that is why it's undefined or no slope. Number four says a funicular railway has several, several stations along its steep track. Station A with coordinates 30, 60 is 60 meters above station zero at ground level. Station B has coordinates 230, H. All coordinates are given in meters. The gradient of the railway segment AB is 0 0.60. Find the height of the station B of the, above the ground. So this one, they're giving us the gradient of the railway and they want us to find the height. So go ahead and pause the video and try that. So I set up a little triangle here. So we have point A at 30 comma 60, point B at 230 comma H, and we know our slope is 0 0.60. So I set our slope that we know 0 0.060 equal to the slope formula. I did H minus 60 over 230 over th minus 30. So simplified 230 minus 30 got 200, multiplied both sides by 200 to cancel off the 200 in the denominator. So you end up with 120 is equal to h minus 60. So then I added 60 to both sides and got the height for b to be 180 meters above ground level. So here's an application problem. Sean and Nicole walk every day without taking any breaks during their walk. Sean walks at 4 kilometers per hour and Nicole walks 2 kilometers every 2 hours. So first we want to complete the table with their distance over a given number of hours and then graph the lines that represent Sean and Nicole's walks on the same pair of axes and then determine the gradient of each line. So go ahead and pause the video and answer question A. So 
to finish filling out the table, if Sean walks four miles or four kilometers per hour, then after one hour he'd be at four kilometers, two hours he'd be at eight, six hours he'd be at 24. If Nicole walks nine kilometers every two hours, that means after one hour she'd be at four and a half kilometers, two hours she'd be at nine, and six hours she'd be at 27. So then I graph this, I have my x-axis being time and hours, I have my y-axis being distance and kilometers, and the red line is Sean's walk and the blue line is Nicole. So then gradient, um, you can use slope formula or you can just use what they tell us here. If he's walking four kilometers per hour, that's just the gradient. So his gradient is four kilometers per hour. If Nicole's walking nine kilometers in two hours, that would be 4.5 kilometers per hour. So her gradient is 4.5 kilometers per hour. So in the same scenario, one Sunday, Nicole gives Sean a one and a half kilometer head start after which they start their time. So he goes one and a half kilometers and then they start their time when she starts walking. So given that situation and assuming that they're keeping their same rate of walking from part A, so Sean's four kilometers per hour and Nicole's nine kilometers every two hours, complete the table for their distances over the given hours, graph the lines that represent Sean and Nicole's daily walks, and then we want to determine the number of hours it will take for Nicole to catch up with Sean after she starts her walk. So she's starting behind him, so how long will it take until she passes him? So go ahead and pause the video and do part B. So given the information, I finished filling out the table. So after two hours, Sean would be at 9.5 kilometers, then 13.5, 17.5, 21.5, just adding the 4 kilometers per hour every single time. Nicole would be the same as the one that she was before, so 4.5, 9, 13.5, 18, 22.5, adding 4.5 kilometers every single time. So then I have my graph here, um, and we see here, unlike the previous one where they both started at zero, this time Sean is starting at 1.5 kilometers, and so he starts up above Nicole, and then at one point crosses and ends up below her. So the distance, when will Nicole catch up? They'll catch up where they intersect, which is at three hours. So at three hours, they're at the same distance. And if you're looking at the graph, it's where the two graphs intersect. So this has been gradient or slope of a line, change in y over change in x.